Hey. All right, final take, final take, final take. Let's do this right now. All right, hey guys, what's going on? Side Home Theater Dude, got a brand new episode for you today. I've been actually pursuing this brand and uh, making this happen for over a year now. I've been sending emails back and forth to the company. Um, basically, the uh, whole response behind those emails was is that this company doesn't necessarily do that. So at CD this year, I made some connections over at Monoprice and actually got the uh, uh, ability to actually have these in the house now. So I have the entire, I can't, you can't see it because it's being eclipsed by this big bad boy I'll get to in a second. But back here we have the entire uh, Monoprice uh, brand new THX certified home theater um, setup. And then over here we have the M215. You guys have been asking about this subwoofer for a really long time. Basically since it was debuted, you guys have been asking about it. Finally got my hands on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do an overview and a quick unboxing and I'll do it right after the intro. So this is the Monoprice M215. You get two 15 inch subwoofers in there, 2000 watts RMS, 3800 watts peak, three inches of X max peak to peak, and the entire thing weighs 215 pounds. All right, so it goes without saying that you're gonna need some space for this thing. This thing is not small. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the uh, actual dimensions right down here so you guys can check them out. As you can tell, I'm a little out of breath, so <laughs> highly recommend grabbing a second pair of hands to move this thing around and uh, get it in your house. So up here we have a power cable, um, looks pretty simple, it says uh, 125 volt, 13 amp, pretty similar to the ones on the, uh, the big boy subwoofers that I have, it's a little thicker than uh, your traditional cable. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that I opened this upside down, <laughs> so that's just the way it's going to have to be for right now. So with something this large, I would highly recommend that, uh, you know, you grab some um, isolation system so you can decouple it from the floor. Um, what I would recommend doing, um, this might be against their policy, but if you don't have the space for one to stand up like this, you might want to go ahead and just have it lay flat. So you can do, you can get away with that by, uh, putting some supports on the back here. And uh, I wouldn't necessarily drill into it, but maybe have some like rubberized suspension system. That way it's upward firing. Um, that's just an idea I have. Um, don't know if it'll necessarily work, but um, that would be one of the things that I would like to try out in the house while I have this thing. But on the bottom, you see those normal little uh, kind of rubberized feet. So even at the same time, if you guys want to grab those SVS isolation systems, you could probably just put six of those on here, decouple your subwoofer from the floor. This is a massive grill. It's not magnetic, because why would it be on a subwoofer this big? You're going to need something sturdy, and they have these huge posts here that look really, uh, really sturdy with their um, metallic design. Put that over here. So what do you get? You get two 15s, right? And then you get uh, ported design as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this thing over and I'll show you guys some close-ups of the front and also some close-ups of the back. All right, so on the back, what do you get? You get a crossover network. And if you're gonna be using this for a, tr a traditional setup, like, uh, like something a little more advanced, like an AVR, highly recommend just cranking this all the way to the top, setting the crossover on your amplifier or your AVR, and then just setting it that way. If you wanna go ahead and turn your crossover off on your amplifier, you know, you can set it up directly however you'd like to have the slope roll on. Here you have your phase. And uh, here's the thing with subwoofers. If you guys aren't getting the most breathtaking performance out of your subwoofer, uh, I would definitely recommend sitting in your list main listening position and either just critically focusing on how loud it's getting or just, you know, if, if you're a little more um, objective, pull out a dB meter and just crank this thing slowly and see how your dBs actually go up. Typically the, the peak of the dBs is gonna be whenever it is gonna be in fully phase. So depending on the position of this thing and also depending on a couple different other setups, you may want to go ahead and change your phase as well. Over here you have your gain. So you can do it a couple different ways. You can either have it to where it's going to be reference level, THX, or you can choose your um, your dBs right here on, on, on the actual control itself. You have your crossover network, you have your extended mode, which apparently you can put this in extended mode, and then you have your choice of either being uh, auto turn on or that it's always gonna be on. So if it's in auto, then it'll pull some, uh, some wattage for standby, and then whenever it senses a signal, it'll turn on. So pretty simple right here, you have a service port, and then you have this uh, monolith subwoofer. It's by Monoprice, and this is certified by THX, so it's actually ultra certified. So the differences in certifications, you may see, you know, different speakers 
certified by THX, but it basically depends on the size of the room that it's going in. So THX Select is going to be a room up to about, I think, they, they measure it in, uh, in, in metrics, but whatever it's in standard mode. And I think it's uh, something along the realm of 2000. But if you're going to be going up to the Ultra Series, it's going to be certified to a room that is uh, certified up to 3000. So, I mean, it basically depends on your, your size of the room. And especially if you're putting something this big in there, you're probably putting this in a big old room and not just a really small cramped, uh, <laughs> small cramped space. So down here, you have a couple different things you can do. You can either do LFE or you can do uh, line input. Some people like to Y these things. I don't necessarily think it's uh, necessary on something like this, but you can do that. Also down here, you have your uh, balanced inputs. So you have a XLR input and you have a pass through. So if you want to daisy chain your subwoofers, you could do that as well. So I, don't, I, w I wouldn't <laughs> understand why you would need uh, two of these having 415s going in the house at the same time. But 415s didn't see no wires. And then I heard boom from the amplifiers. If, if you guys are like me, you, you guys know that uh, bass is addictive. So um, especially good quality bass. Down here, you have your power port and then your on off switch. So on the front, you have your 215s and they, uh, they look pretty beefy. I was, I was checking out the specs on these and I'm pretty sure they have a three inch voice coil. So um, these 15s will get going and I've seen them in action uh, over at Cedia. You have some pretty good uh, X Max on these things. You have your ported design down below. Quick pro tip, if you're gonna be using this thing, uh, set it and forget it, put it in a position and never have to worry about it again. Make sure that your subwoofer crawl is done and it's already in the best location for your room because something this, this large, you're going to get some dents and scratches and whatnot if you're constantly moving it around. Finish is pretty simple. It's that black ash like a lot of companies do. Um, I don't hate it. I think it looks great. And uh, so enough talking about this thing. Let's go ahead and hear it. Assemble. No! So after that, I have some final thoughts on, on this subwoofer. Uh, I'm going to be doing a full uh, subwoofer review and, you know, implementation and demo of this thing a little later on. So stay tuned to the channel for those upcoming videos. But just some final thoughts on, on this subwoofer just as it stands. Uh, a couple of things that I wish that was done uh, on this one. I would like to see maybe a little more paint on the, the port itself. Uh, because in my room, I'm probably laying this thing sideways and it's very easy to go ahead and see right through to the back of the port and you can see where it's painted and you can see where it's not painted. I mean, it's a simple fix. Anyone can just put a roller on in there and just fix that up real quick. Um, but just for my taste, that would just be something that I would think about moving forward if I were to keep this thing. Uh, another thing is that uh, something this big definitely needs an isolation system. I just had this thing on the ground um, and it was shaking things that uh, haven't been shook in, a, in, in quite some time. The door was rattling. Uh, I heard some AC grate noise uh, as well. Um, that's just another thing to consider, but a lot of these things can just be easily fixed. Another thing to consider is that since this is a THX subwoofer, um, I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but in that first demo that I did, um, the drivers weren't moving a whole lot. There wasn't a whole lot of uh, bass coming through on them. But that's basically because whenever I just hooked it up, you know, right from my old settings, from whatever I had everything dialed in from before, um, 
the subwoofer wasn't moving as much. Um, I, I went ahead and contacted my buddies over at Monoprice, and they basically said that since this is a THX certified subwoofer, you need to go ahead and redo a complete calibration on the, uh, the, the subwoofer itself. So I went ahead and did that, and as you guys know, the results were there was a lot more uh, um, excursion on that second demo that I did, and uh, the bass was a lot more prominent throughout the house. I could actually feel it on the couch a little more. Uh, it was shaking my legs as well through my pants and different things like that. So with, with something like this, um, <laughs> highly recommend getting the, the job done right the first time, getting it calibrated, doing a, a really great job of doing that. And then you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, buying something this expensive and this large, and then, uh, you know, maybe being disappointed with it. So always check with uh, the manufacturer um, with their settings and their recommendations. Uh, and that way you guys get the most out of your subwoofer itself. So overall, pretty, pretty impressed with this thing. I really can't wait to go ahead and get a couple more demos in with this thing and then do a in-depth review. That's going to be coming a little later on, just like I talked about earlier. But as always, if you guys want uh, links to this stuff, I'm going to leave it down in the description. Make sure you like, favorite, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.